Let's have a quick recap of what we saw in the previous class. We started with the idea of understanding how spins orient in an external magnetic field V0. The two states alpha and beta presses about the main magnetic field that's applied along the z-axis. And this results in a tiny magnetization along the z-axis that comes up due to the population excess in the ground state. And this magnetization can be perturbed with the help of an RF pulse and when the magnetization is at an angle to the magnetic field B, it starts to presses about this B field. And these, these are introduced to the block equations. This equation means when the angle between the magnetization and magnetic field vector is anything but 0 or 180 degrees, then the magnetization ends up processing about the B field. Let's say the effective B field is along a given axis and then the magnetization is at an angle, then the magnetization starts to press at about B. You could also have other angles that the magnetization, that the magnetic field vector ends up inscribing. So then it ends up processing about this. So this is the motion that we are trying to understand. Whenever you have magnetization at an angle to magnetic field, magnetization starts to process about the effective magnetic field. And when a coil is placed appropriately such that the magnetization cuts this coil, a current is induced which can then be observed as a function of time which helps you get the NMR spectrum. So, so far this has been the introduction that has been given to you. The two relaxation mechanisms that is T1 versus T2 were also introduced to you ad hoc where T1 will be the long g relaxation that helps get the polarization back while T2 is the transverse relaxation that results in return of the random phase as we have seen in equilibrium. We will take a moment now to simulate all of this so that pictorially we can try to understand what is precession. This simulation can be accessed from drcmr.dk slash block simulator. To start with, let us get familiarized with what all we see in the simulation. This thin white line is the direction of B0, the external magnetic field. Whatever you see as gray cylinder here is the magnetization that has been developed. So we are at equilibrium condition, all the conditions can be set here and the pulses that you want to apply can be done from this menu. There are also few other menu bars that would help us set some of the parameters. Let's take a look at them in detail. The relaxation menu helps you choose whether to have T1 and T2 relaxation on for the simulation if yes, what should be their values in seconds. And for the first simulation that we would end up doing, we would keep T1 and T2 as off so that we first understand how precession works and then followed by that we can try to understand relaxation. And the next menu here is the view menu which helps you indicate or represent the different vectors that we are trying to see. In this case, the B1 field which is the RF that we are applying and the torque that is the force that is experienced by the magnetization when you have an effective B field. You can also plot the magnetization along the x axis which is given as mx, the magnitude of transverse magnetization, transverse magnetization includes both x and y axis. So you have something like a square root of mx square plus my square is what you are looking at when you have mod uh, of x, mxy and then you can also take a look at the longitudinal magnetization and all of this is actually present in the right extreme here. So as we do the simulations we will see changes that happen in the top right extreme of this simulator. The next menu is the fields menu. Here you get to choose what is the strength of your magnetic field Tesla. You can also change 
the power of the B1 pulse that you end up applying. If you are applying a hard 90 pulse, this gets chosen automatically. The next menu here is called the gradients and for the current purposes, this will be not looked at. And as we get introduced to what gradients are, we will end up repeating the simulation. Finally, the important aspect of this simulation is also to understand how to go to the rotating frame. So you have different options here. The stationary frame indicates you are in the lab frame and for the sake of convenience, the program nicely shows you the lab frame as you see in pale yellow here. Alternatively, you can also choose the B0 frame, which is a frame where it processes at the Larmor precession frequency. We will restrict our discussions and simulations to stationary frame and the B0 frame for this class. Let us try out the case where relaxation is turned off. We will be able to see the B1 and the torque vector as yellow and purple vectors. Magnetization shall be visualized on the top right corner of the window and the B fields for now B0 field is set to 6 units. No gradients are applied and we are in the stationary frame of reference. And to start with, we will do the simulation from, from equilibrium. And as you are able to see, the magnetization here is actually along the B0 axis. In order to do this, we will start with a 90 degree hard pulse. Once you excite it, you saw two vectors in yellow and purple that showed you the B1 and the torque. And what ended up happening was the magnetization tipped. Of course, it took an interesting motion and then once it reached the transverse plane, it is processing about the main magnetic field B0. Let me repeat this simulation so that you are able to see it again. In order to repeat this, we will go back to equilibrium and then click 90 hard. For the sake of visualizing the trajectory taken by the magnetization in the, under the influence of an RF pulse, I am going to apply something called a 90 degree soft pulse. This does achieve something similar of the 90 degree hard pulse under an assumption we are on resonance for the soft pulse. But not going into the details of it, we will apply the 90 degree soft pulse so that you are able to see the yellow and the purple vectors that are shown for B1 and torque. Okay, the moment I hit this, you are able to see a purple vector and an uh, yellow vector that were present. The yellow vector is the B1 while the purple vector is the torque. Let's repeat it again so that you are able to see it. Okay, you are able to visualize that the magnetization ended up taking something of a path that looked like that. And after it reached the transverse plane, it ends up processing about the B0. Let's repeat the same process where we end up moving ourselves to the rotating frame. So we go here and choose rotating frame and go back to equilibrium. Now let me apply the soft pulse again. If you are able to see, all that ends up happening is that the magnetization slowly tips to the transverse plane. That is largely because your frame that we are able to see is moving here. We are going to the rotating frame such that the precision about B0 is completely removed. And you are also able to appreciate the fact that the transverse magnetization is observed in the shadow in the lab frame. The length of the vector indicates how much you have been able to transfer. Let's say you started with M0 and if this is the size of M0. You will see that if you apply a shorter pulse, let's say a 30 degree pulse, the length of this vector is smaller. Let's repeat the same exercise where we go back to equilibrium and try to take a look at how the 90 degree soft pulse behaves in the rotating frame. You are able to see the B1 and the torque. The torque is pulling the magnetization while the B1 is perpendicular to both the initial magnetization and the uh, B0 field. You are able to see on the top right corner that the magnetization that we ended up creating either mod of MXY which is the magnitude of transverse magnetization comes up as a straight line meaning that you have completely converted whatever you started with. 
if you pay close attention when you are implementing the pulse you would have seen that mx starts to starts from zero and then slowly builds up to the maximum that we are seeing right now of course as a function of time so this indicates that you applied the pulse during this duration and you achieved the magnetization wherever you wanted it to be uh, in this time period following this you are also able to see the mx which comes as an oscillation when we keep of course a, a coil here the only reason why we are still able to get a magnetization although you see a static vector here is because remember you are in the rotating frame the moment you go to the stationary frame you do end up seeing the precession so the rotating frame is just a figment of our imagination so as to help us understand the motion of magnetization only with respect to the fields that you apply rather than multiple fields that exist since b0 is going to exist forever it just helps in order to not visualize precession about b0 and just see the influence with respect to b1 let's also take a little moment to observe what happens for a 30 degree pulse so let's go back to equilibrium so when i apply a 30 degree pulse you still see the b1 and the torque that the magnetization experiences remember i am applying a soft pulse so that you can see all these vectors you can still apply a 30 degree hard pulse so that this happens much faster but for all practical reasons for the sake of simulation uh, a soft pulse helps for us to visualize therefore i am doing it the main thing you are able to see here the length of the m0 vector along the transverse plane is smaller than what you saw and on top of it you should also realize the longitudinal magnetization has not gone to zero you can still see it here for the previous simulation where we had a 90 degree pulse this white line had completely gone to zero however in this case where you have a 30 degree pulse you still have some longitudinal magnetization remaining